guys today we'll be solving an uh, intercept question uh, with uh, using sun as an example of a celestial body so we'll start with the question the question says it's 31st of august 1992 and it's pm on our ship that means the local time on our ship is in the evening so it is after 12 o'clock the dead reckoning or the estimated position is given to us and the sextant altitude of the sun's lower limb uh, is given as well the chronometer error is 1 minute 30 seconds fast and the chronometer time is showing 3 hours 11 minutes 20 seconds the index error was 2.5 minutes on the arc and the height of i was 17 meters All right what we have to do is find the direction of the position line and a position through which it passes all right so let's start with the question so before we start with the solution uh, we have to determine the ambiguity of the chronometer time so what we do is we write down the chronometer time given to us and then we add 12 hours to the chronometer time and we find out the second option of the chronometer so we'll have two options of the chronometer time it could be three in the morning or three in the afternoon and uh, to that we apply our error which is error is fast so error will be subtracted so we subtract the error from both the options and then we find out our gmt time again in the gmt time also we have two options now to find out what is the correct gmt we will apply our longitude in time correction now longitude in time is found out by dividing the longitude by 15 but today the longitude is 0 degrees so if i divide 0 degrees 0 minutes by 15 i will get 0 and that is why there is no longitude in time and in today's case our gmt is the same as the lmt all right now how do i know which is the correct lmt or which is the correct gmt well the hint is given to us in the question that it is pm it is after of 12 o'clock in the ship the local time is pm so in this case the first case then becomes irrelevant so the local time is pm only in this case here therefore my gmt is 31st of august 15 0 hours 15 hours 9 minutes and 50 seconds so remember to use the gmt and not the lmt to solve the question now the next thing we have to do is using the gmt we have to go into the nautical almanac and find out the gha and the declination as well as the d value of the declination so we'll go into 31st of august 15 hours 09 minutes 50 seconds so this is 31st of august on the top you can see this is 31st august this is the sun the gh and the declination is here for 15 hours will be here so if i go here it will be this here this is my gh this is my declination 8 degrees 24.2 minutes north i will also note down that the declination is decreasing as i go from 15 to 16 that means the d correction that i will find out by this d value here using the d value i'll go into the increments page and find out the d correction that will be subtracted because my declination is decreasing as i go from 1500 hours to 1600 hours the pattern is a decreasing pattern i found out my gha so i'll go back to the solution now so i found out my gha now i need to find my increment which is always added to that i, I need to find out the increment by going into the increments page for 9 minutes and 50 seconds this is only for 15 hours so that for my gh that i will find out will be for 15 hours 09 minutes 50 seconds also my declination i have found out is for 15 hours i need to find out the declination the d correction for 9 minutes and 50 seconds by going into the same increment page so i will go back into the increment page or i'll go back into the nautical almanac sorry and i'll go back into the increment section actually so you can see here my increments i've already marked down my increment my increment is here so if i can show you my increment my increment uh, is here 50 minutes 9 minutes and 50 seconds that's my increment 2 degrees 27.5 my v and d correction is also here so my d value for 0 0.9 and my d correction is 0 0.1 so at this point of time i'll ask you to just pause the video and have a look a careful look on this page to see how i determined my increments and my d correction values all right so it is for 9 minutes and 50 seconds i determined my increment first which is 2 degrees and 27.5 minutes and then i went into the next column for v or d correction where i got into the column for v or d value for 0 0.9 i found out the correction value of 0 
so now I go back into the uh, solutions and you can see I have added the increment now I found out my corrected GHA to that I will apply my longitude because my longitude is zero here it doesn't matter whether I add or subtract otherwise if it was east longitude I would have added it if it was west longitude I would have subtracted it so I found out my LHA then my D correction also I will subtract because the declination was decreasing and I found out the D correction value I will apply the and I have got the declination now for 15 hours, 0, 09 minutes and 50 seconds. And I also know my latitude. My LH in this case will be named West because if LH is between 0 to 180, I name it West. If it is more than 180 to 360, I name it East. So because my LH is between 0 to 180, I will name it West. Then I design my sextant altitude. My sextant altitude is given to me as 39 degree 15 minutes then my indexer is given to me is on the arc whenever it is on the arc I will subtract it if it is off the arc I will add it so I have applied my index error subtracting it from the minutes I get my observed altitude to this I apply my height of I of 17 minutes 17 meters sorry and my height of I correction I will find out I'll go back into the nautical almanac and find out the height of I correction so to do that I have to go into the first page of the nautical almanac and you can see that uh, my height of I correction is given here the dip this is my height of I this is in meters I'll go down the meters column and I'll stop at 17 meters which which lies between 16.9 and 17.4 somewhere here no interpolation is required I find out my height of i correction as minus 7.3 now height of i correction is always subtracted so i will subtract minus 7.3 and i find out my apparent altitude value which is 39 degrees 5.2 now using this apparent altitude value and it's sun's lower limb on 31st of august so what i'll do is it's sun's lower limb ll and it's 31st of august these are the some of the information i need to find out my total correction Alright, so I will use these values and I'll go back into the same page from where I got my height of I, but this time I will go under this column here. This is my total correction column. I have to go for August, which comes under between April to September. These are my apparent altitude values, 39 degrees 7.2, and this is my lower limb column. So I'll go down the apparent altitude value. I'll stop at 39 degrees 7.2, which lies somewhere here. No interpolation required, and I find out my total correction value from here for lower limb of the sun is 14.8 and I will apply that correction which for which I'll get my true altitude then what I do is I'll subtract 90 degrees or rather I subtract my true altitude from 90 degrees so 90 degrees minus my true altitude will give me my true zenith distance or TZD alright so 90 degrees minus 39 degrees 20 minutes gives me my to a distance of 50 degrees 40 minutes now I have all these values I can find out my calculated zenit distance or CZD CZD stands for calculated zenit distance which will depend on the LHA latitude and declination plus or minus depending on the latitude and declination same names it will be plus different names minus so sign of lat and sign of declination now this plus and minus depends on whether latitude and declination are same names or not here I can see they are different names so if they are different names they will be minus because declination is north and latitude is south so therefore I'll put in the values for finding out my CZD I'll put in the values and this time I'll put in minus because my latitude and declination are different names these are my LHA this is my lat and this is my declination similarly this is my lat and this is my declination find out the values make sure your figures match my figures then here cos inverse of this value will give me my calculated zenit distance below my calculated zenit distance I will put my true zenit distance that I found out before all right so my true zenit distance comes from here over here the difference between the two gives me my intercept so 50 degrees 43.8 minus 50 degrees 40 minutes gives me 3.8 minutes and I have named it two words why because sorry my apologies just press the wrong button here so my apologies for that I've gone completely lost my question there it is all right so 3.8 minutes two words 
so I have named it two words because uh, if my true is tiny it is two words what does that mean that means if my true zenith distance is tiny that means it's less than calculated zenith distance calculated zenith distance is more then I will name my intercept two words if it is a more than calculated zenith distance I name it away so if true zenith distance is more than calculated zenith distance I name it away otherwise I name it two words in this case my true zenith distance was less than calculated zenith distance so t was tiny so it was two words so I got my intercept finally I need to calculate my position and to do that I will calculate first my a which is found by dividing tan lat by tan LHA so put in the values of the lat here which is 10 degrees 11 minutes and the LHA which is 47 degrees 25.2 and you can find out your a value a is 0 0.17 ignore any negative sign if you get any negative sign in your calculator so ignore negative sign but you have to name your a a is named opposite to latitude unless lha is between 90 and 270 so your lha is not between 90 and 270 so you will name it opposite to latitude your latitude is south so you will name it north all right only if your lha is between 90 and 270 then you will name it same as south all right i'll just put that here otherwise you guys may forget all right then we can find out b b is found out by dividing tan of declination divided by sine of lha so you know your declination is 8 degrees 24.1 and you know your lha is 47 degrees 25.2 minutes again ignore any negative sign if you get any negative sign in the calculator ignore it but you have to name it and you name it b same as declination all right your declination is north so your b will be north as well then for c c comes from a combination of a and b if a and b are same names you will add the two in this case they are both north so you will add the two so 0.17 plus 0 0.20 will give you 0.37 and you will name it north because they are both north so you will name it north if they were different names you would have subtracted it and C would have retained the name of the larger value. Once you get C, you have to find out the tan of azimuth. AZ stands for azimuth, which you find out by the formula 1 divided by C times cos of latitude. Put in the values of C and latitude, solve the denominator first, and then divide 1 by it. Alright, what you get is 2.74597. I have gone up to 5 decimal places then a tan inverse of this value will give you the azimuth value which is 70 degrees at this point i have named 70 degrees as north 70 degrees west so north comes from the name of c name of c whatever is c you will name it north or south accordingly west comes from lha remember we named our lha west earlier because LHA was between 0 to 180, we named it west, so we named azimuth north 70 degrees west. Now, north 70 degrees west, if you think about it, north west 70 degrees from here. So, this is 360 degrees. This would mean that you are at about 290 degrees. 360 minus 70 gives you 290 degrees. That is your true bearing is 290 so to find your position line you will just add 90 and subtract 90 degrees if you subtract 90 degrees from 290 you get 200 if you add 90 degrees to 290 you get 380 but your position line cannot be more than 360 so 380 minus 360 gives you 0 to 0 so your position line is in the orientation of 0 to 0 to 200 degrees all right so this means that if your position line is going towards 290, a line drawn perpendicular to 290 will be in the orientation of 0 to 0 and 200. Alright guys, so this was an intercept question. I thought I'll show this question to you. This is using sun as an example. I'll put up more examples using other celestial bodies in the future. Uh, let me know uh, what you thought about this video guys. Alright, study hard and let me know if you have any feedback or comments.